Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Building Your Dream Sound System. In my previous episode, I talked about computer audio file, but I thought there are two aspects that I should talk about in details that warrant this full length of episode discussion. The first one, driver and software. And the second one will be the analog or digital volume control. In a computer audio file system that is of high quality, you will tend to use an external DAC, a digital to analog converter. The external DAC allows you to convert the digital signal to an interface, be it USB, optical, coaxial, or some other interface available on the market through its digital to analog conversion circuitry inside the DAC to an analog signal that can be either output using its analog output or the headphone output on the front panel in this particular unit. So the conversion takes place in the unit, but what is it to do with the driver that, and the software that I would like to discuss today? When a computer is connected to an external DAC to an interface again over USB, USB is a US universal serial bus. Uh, it's been around for a long time, and this particular USB cable is a USB 2.0 Type A to Type B. It, it is still very popular among the audiophile world because of the legacy. Most of the devices in today's world still support USB 2.0 Type A to Type B. In this particular case, there's no exception. This deck has a USB 2.0 Type B connection at the back as the digital input interface. There are some other input available as well, the coaxial as well as the optical. Oh, before I forget, it's easier to use my pointer. USB, coaxial, and optical. But for connection from a computer like a Mac Mini, should you use its internal built-in optical output? Um, just in case if you are not aware, there's an optical output for the older Mac Mini. Should you use the internal optical output or should you use the USB connection? I always recommend the USB connection. USB has evolved over the past decades and in my opinion, USB is a superior connection for computer, a consumer grade computer to an external deck. Using the built-in either coaxial or optical outputs in this case, in this Mac Mini, will have the audio signal pass through its internal sound card. So let's test that one step. There's a sound card built in in this Mac Mini that processes the audio signal that output through this 3.5 mm headphone jack that allows you to connect to an a headphone like this or an external sound devices through this 3.5 mm headphone connector. Plugging into this port here that allows you to play music through this pair of headphones or to even to a pair of active loudspeaker. But um, again, come back to the internal processing of this headphone output and optical output. The sound card internally processes the signal. So if you were to connect or if you already invested in an external deck like this particular unit, I will not recommend the optical connection. The optical connection, like I said in a few seconds ago, the audio signal passed through an internal sound card of the Mac Mini and we do not know the quality of the digital to digital signal processing. If you were to use this optical output to this relatively expensive um, external deck, you might be missing out a bit of stuff. But having the USB connection instead, which is quite easy to connect the two devices together, let me just show it to you. Connect the uh, USB Type A at the back to the back of the unit. This is a Mac Mini, it has been with me for a long time. And to the back of the DSC, this allow you to have asynchronous USB connection of the external deck to the computer. Uh, we are talking about the Mac computer right now. Uh, in the later part of this video, I'll cover the Windows computer. 
the Mac operating system will detect the external deck connected to the to the USB port and it will be it will appear on a sound setting right away. Um, having the USB connection, the advantage is first asynchronous, where the external deck requests the signal, the data over USB through its internal clock. And most likely in most of the external decks, the crystal, the clock quality is very, very high. So much higher as compared to the internal built-in sound card in this Mac Mini. So that address the question of whether the sound card, the built-in sound card quality digital output is good enough or not. And second is that, as I mentioned this now, USB is, has evolved over the past decade. Having a USB connection to the modern deck nowadays will yield higher sound quality reproduction. So to reiterate, we always recommend the USB connection for computer audio file when you are using a consumer grade computer like the Mac Mini, MacBook or desktop or some other brands um, computers available on the market. USB connection is our highest recommendation. So having the deck connected to Mac Mini using USB, the Mac operating system will detect the external DAC in the sound setting right away. Depending on the software that you use to play music, you may be able to select exclusive mode control of the external deck. It is important to note that exclusive mode control allows the software like Tidal, Rune, J River, or Divana Studio, or even the full bar to take full control of the external deck to stream music exclusively as the name suggested from the software like Tidal to this external deck. Any other sound producers among the main operating system like if let's say for example if you are having a zoom call if you have the music playing using Tidal exclusive mode control to this external device as the DAC the zoom call sound or the zoom call music signals audio signal will not pass through this external deck that guarantee the bit perfect transfer from the Tidal software to the external deck same goes to the rest of the software that I mentioned just now but it is not all software available on the market has this exclusive mode control recently I tried Spotify I think there's no exclusive mode control of the Spotify application on Mac operating system to an external deck over USB but if you are if you want a higher quality sound quality reproduction using an external deck please remember to select exclusive mode control for Mac computer it's kind of easy because you don't have to deal with the driver installation but for Windows computer for Windows computer which I happen to have one here please always remember to install the USB driver supplied by the manufacturer the deck manufacturer like RME Holo Audio, Singser, Gustart, or Dinafrips. We carry Dinafrips. So please always remember to install the USB driver supplied by the manufacturer in the Windows computer. That allows the Windows computer to have exclusive mode control to the external deck using either Asio, Wasapi, or Canal Stream. Uh, it's kind of difficult to project all this on my little screen here, but I'll have a comprehensive written instruction down in the blog post below that is linked to this video. So the blog post will detail how the driver will look like or how the driver installation will look like and how you could select exclusive mode using different kind of software. I'll do my best to have all the software available installed in my Windows computer as well as Mac computer and give you an illustration of how to configure this software in Windows environment and in Mac environment so that you can optimize the sound quality or the connection of the computer to an external deck. It is kind of important to make it right so that you can be sure that the music stream to an external deck like this will be of high quality. Just, just to stress on the point of the optical output, I think this little device here comes with a 3.5mm headphone jack and this headphone jack serves as an optical output as well. So it, the internal sound card output SPDIF signal through this optical port but I will not recommend 
you to use an internal sound card or even an external sound card optical output to an external deck. In my opinion, USB has USB audio has evolved over the past decades. Please use USB connection with modern deck. Uh, in the older decks, maybe others interface are better because of the USB receiver restriction in the past but for modern DSC the USB receiver are of very high quality and high resolution if you want to play high resolution USB is the only interface available right now okay um, the second part of this video I want to talk about is volume attenuation in digital domain and analog domain when you have an external deck connected to a computer you can attenuate the volume using the software or using the operating system itself. It changes the volume from 0 to 100% digitally. In my opinion, if the external deck that connected to the computer has a mean to attenuate the volume, please do not use the digital volume attenuation in the software or in the operating system. The digital at volume attenuation in digital domain in most cases, we have a little bit of a loss in details, loss in resolution, loss in dynamic or compressed dynamic that may deteriorate the sound quality. I always recommend, I'm an advocate of analog volume attenuation. Control the volume in analog domain so that will not attenuate or jeopardize the digital signal quality. But for device like this, um, that external deck from RME allows you to attenuate the volume externally. But um, whether does it um, be sounds better compared to a dedicated preamp, that I will leave it to you guys. But if you have a device that doesn't have the volume control, as an external deck that doesn't have volume control, which I happen to have one with me, which I'm going, I'm going to pop it out. What, what you can do to such a device if you want to have a uh, volume control. Just hang on a second, let me do some housekeeping. Um, instead of showing the Mac, I'm going to show the Windows computer. This is the tag that I have from Sensor. This is a pure DAC, there's no volume control, there's no headphone output. It's a pure digital to analog converter that does its job to convert the digital signal through USB interface or some other interface available on this deck but it doesn't do volume attenuation it doesn't do it digitally or analog domain so you will need to have an external device to attenuate the volume to go with this pure DAC very different from the RME let me just pop this guy this RME in my opinion is a pretty versatile unit where it does almost everything all in one uh, it has headphone output, it has volume control, fixed or variable, active RC RCA or XL output. It comes with a little screen. It is a Swiss knife that does most of the stuff all in one. But if you happen to have an external deck like the Singer or Dina Frips, which is a pure digital to analog converter that doesn't have headphone output, that doesn't have volume attenuation capability, you need to add a headphone amp if you were to drive a pair of headphones or you need to add a preamp to attenuate the volume in analog domain if you were to drive a pair of active loud speaker again i happen to have one with me it is from um, sound aware this is the p1 class a headphone m this device allows you to have xlr or rca input at the back maybe just let me switch to the back so that you can see what are the input available you may connect the XLR output from the DAC to the headphone amp or preamp and this device here allows you to drive headphone using the 6.3mm or the XLR balance headphone jack on the front panel. This little knob here is the volume control in analog domain. Um, this particular device is a buffer active preamp with headphone amp. There are preamps available on the market that is uh, called passive preamp. Passive preamp usually do not need power supply. What it does is it attenuates the volume using uh, either carbon resistor or step attenuator using discrete resistor. 
But will I recommend such a device or not? Uh, usually passive preamp, if it is built to a price point like the one that I have here, is a very low cost uh, passive preamp that does XLR input, RCA input, as well as XLR output, RCA output. What is inside this unit is a passive volume attenuator. It's a potential meter from Alps, Japan. High quality one, pretty high quality one. But the, the drawback of such a passive preamp is its impedance matching. The input impedance is variable because as you attenuate this little volume here, it changes the input impedance. So input impedance changes is not a good thing uh, for the external device like DAC connection. It has to do with impedance matching, which I will detail in my blog post below. And the external output and the output to an external device like the active pair of lock speaker, the, the output impedance changes as well. So the impedance matching of such a passive preamp is questionable if it is not built to the standard of audiophile. Of course, there are some other passive preamp available on the market addresses this concern and it can sound pretty good. But uh, for a start, if you are a beginner in this hobby, an active preamp or active headphone amp, oh, headphone amp is always active because it needs to drive the headphone using its, um, its output stage. So headphone amp is always active. It's, I would recommend active preamp and active headphone amp for the beginning. All right, so this device attenuates the volume in analog domain. Um, again, I'm an advocate of um, analog volume attenuation, where it does its job to attenuate, attenuate the signal in analog domain instead of the digital domain. That will warrant a pretty high sound reproduction or high quality sound. So it allows you to connect the computer to an external deck and to, an, to a preamp to a pair of active loudspeaker. So to summarize in this short video, the first thing that you need to watch out for when connecting an external deck to a computer, be it a Mac computer or Windows computer, please remember to configure the driver and the software that you use to play back the music correctly so that you can optimize the connection between the computer and the deck. The next thing that you need to watch out for is the volume control. If the device allows you to control the volume in analog domain, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, you are all covered. You are all well covered with such a device. But if it doesn't, I would recommend you to use an external device like this, a headphone end cam preamp or a preamp cam headphone end that allows you to control the volume in analog domain. Such a combo combination, uh, what we call in the old days, is called a separate system where you have a pure BAC and you have a dedicated headphone or preamp. Will it sound better compared to the all-in-one device like this? Uh, that I'll leave it to you. But such a device like the dedicated Class A headphone M allows you to drive harder to drive headphone. If it is something that is important to you, you may consider uh, DSC and headphone combination. But you have a simpler system that you just want to enjoy the music uh, with a not so difficult to drive headphone and a pair of active loudspeaker, uh, this is a very neat solution. All right, if you stay until the end of the video, thank you so much. Please remember to subscribe and hit the notification button so that you don't miss the future videos. I'll talk about more on the streamer in the next episode. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.